Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And we're going to continue looking at Daniel chapter 12. We'll see if we start drawing this stuff on a line. I'm still looking at the numbers. Uh, but before we begin, uh, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all the things that you teach us. We're thankful for those that participate and those that watch these videos. We know, Lord, that uh, your Holy Spirit is working upon hearts all around the world and upon our hearts, and that you're seeking to teach us of the meekness and the lowliness of Christ, and that we can depend upon you in all things at all times. We know, Lord, the trials that we face are meant to shape our characters in this regard. We ask, Lord, that your spirit can be here to teach and instruct us, to correct us. And I pray that it will work upon the hearts of those watching the video as well. Um, we just ask that as we look at these things, that you can guide and direct. And um, that these things that we study will change us and affect those around us. We ask for your angels' care and protection in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. Now, so a couple of things, not, not really related to, to what we're studying here, but uh, sort of in the sense that um, there's a guy, Jim Bob or something, who keeps commenting on my videos. I have, um, I'm not sure what his church is that he belongs to. He's definitely not a Seventh-day Adventist. And he has some strange, strange things he says that I don't fully understand. He, he's talking about this, um, red heifer offering that, you know, so this, so I'd assume he's a dispensationalist of some sort because you got a lot of these people who are talking about this idea that, you know, the Jews are going to rebuild the temple and they, they're getting this red heifer that has, I guess, it's completely red, like it has no white hairs on it at all or something. And I was just wondering if anybody knows where this crazy idea has come from. Anybody have a clue about it? Why everybody's talking about this red heifer offering? Nobody? Well, they keep this idea because if you, I believe if we go back into the initial offerings in the wilderness, wasn't there a red heifer that they used? Yeah, so the red heifer offering, I've studied that years ago, right? So the red heifer offering is simply uh, when somebody touches a dead body, they're going to be ceremonially, ceremonially unclean. And so uh, they take this red heifer and they burn it with hyssop and scarlet. And, and uh, they, they have running water that they, they mix with it and stuff. And, and this is going to be set aside so that when somebody, you know, a relative dies and you have to deal with touching a dead body, then um, you can, uh, you, you, this is applied to you, this red heifer offering these ashes of the red heifer. And then, um, and then there's a certain period of time. I think it's seven days or whatever. And then you're, you're no longer ceremonially unclean. But, you know, I've tried to find the origin of like who came up with this idea that somehow you have to have a red heifer offered in order to rebuild the third temple. You know, it's to me, it's just kind of kooky stuff. I mean, you know, it, it's like you have these evangelicals, and dispensationalists, and Pentecostals just getting caught up in these different things. You know, if it isn't uh, um, blood moons or the the seven year sabbatical cycle in the economy or whatever, it's it's always something new. But I just wondered if anybody had looked into it because I mean, I, I spent time looking into it and it was like just utter nonsense. But nobody knows when this started. I don't know. Anyway, it's just one of those weird things. You, you, you just always have new things popping up all the time that, that people are looking at. And, and it's one of those things that makes Christians look, look kooky as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, it, it just, it just boggles my mind. But, uh, you know, hopefully Jim Bob keeps watching the videos and, and starts to learn something, but. If you if you read the comments, you can see he's just completely 
clueless when it comes to the Bible prophecy, you know, from from a historical uh, um, understanding of it. But anyway, I, I just wanted to touch on that, see if anybody knows anything. Okay, so nobody really knows much about that. You know, it's not usually something that's in our purview as far as being Bible students, but he seems to think it's really important. Okay, um, so going back to Daniel chapter 12, we have all of these symbols um, in these first few verses dealing with the close of probation, right? And so we know um, that if we apply you know, we look at the historical application, it's really clear. This is, of course, things that are still going to happen. The close of probation has not occurred. We can't know the time of the close of probation. We we know the order of ev- events because we've looked at them. So we know that uh, obviously the Sunday law is going to come before that, the loud cry, and then uh, the martyrs, and then the close of probation. And then after the close of probation, we have the time of Jacob's trouble, which occurs during the sixth plague. So the plagues are going to begin after the close of probation. And then we have, of course, you know, a special resurrection. Right? So that's going to be in verse two. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So we looked at that a little bit. And then um, now when it talks here at, in verse three, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. We never looked at this yet. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, so a good question would be, why is this comparison used when it talks about the wise? So there's a number of questions that I was thinking about. So we know that there's going to be those that are delivered, everyone that's found written in the book, right? And and then it's going to have the special resurrection. And when it mentions the special resurrection, then it's going to mention the wise. And, and it's going to use this comparison of they shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they're going to turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So I, I don't remember ever really looking into that. That phrase there, that sentence. What what would we see here? Just on a very basic level. Uh, the comparison between the wise, wise and foolish, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we oh. see the two classes there. Yeah, so we do see and, the two classes. Yeah. And when when it says shall shine as as the brightness of, of the firmament, I'm I'm thinking of the covenant with, with Abraham. You know, tell the stars. Okay. Well, okay, so that, yeah. Okay, so the star is the covenant and with Abraham. It has to do with the covenant. Yeah, yeah. that's what it. That's what it reminds me. And then I was thinking, oh well, before Adam and Eve fell, they had this cloak, this 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 cloak of brightness, this this radiance from God. Well, we're we're gonna have that back. I mean, if by by faith we're all gonna be there, right? Saved. So yeah. that's what's com- coming to me as I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Now we do have, of course, the firmament mentioned in Genesis chapter one, verse six to eight. Of course most mentioned right and 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 the importance there would it it goes back to the creation of the world right and and then it talks about the stars and that's going to talk about the stars in genesis chapter one as well is they're going to be created um so i'm wondering if if part of this reference is uh going back to genesis one and and when we deal with the stars i mean this has to do with what the sun and the moon and the stars have to do with timekeeping. So I'm wondering if maybe that's why that reference is there. So I think you're right because timekeeping is being attacked right now. Like people are confusing prophetic time and, and, and the symbols with that to actually time setting as in fortune telling. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's obviously this problem with time setting. I mean, and that's the thing that I look at with that that I think is the problem with this movement um, in the direction that it's gone. And, and that direction, though, has kind of been there for a long time with time setting. And, and it's not so much setting actual dates, like using chronology to set dates, but it's sort of this getting things out of order of what is supposed to happen. So 
you know, a person can talk about maybe Jesus will come back this year, right? You know, and of course, we know that's not the case. Jesus is not going to come back this year. And how do we know that? I asked them, where is the worldwide Sunday law? Are we all being forced to go to mass, etc.? We have so many things that have to occur. And there is just a basic logistics, even when thing, you say, well, the last events will be rapid ones. Yeah, well, they are rapid. Things are happening very rapidly, but still not within a year and definitely not within, you know, we got what, uh, eight months left this year. But, you know, people will ignore the order of events. Like to even talk, to talk about a Sunday law when the world hasn't been warned. The Sunday law is not going to come first, and then we're going to prepare Seventh-day Adventists uh, to stand for the Sunday law. They're, they're already going to be tested at that time. You know, there isn't going to be time to like give a message to Seventh-day Adventists so that they can be prepared for the Sunday law when the Sunday law is already here. So, so there's a lot of things that have to occur. There's a lot of work that has to be done. Now, God, of course, is going to take the word and in, work into his own hand, and we, we will see things happen in ways that we don't expect. But it's still going to take time. And we saw this with Miller, in Millerite history, where they just set aside all of these things that were that they had said were going to happen before Christ returns and just ignored them and said, well, you know, he's going to come October 22nd, 1844. But, you know, we haven't had the plagues yet. You know, we haven't had the close of probation. You know, and there's lots of things that have to happen before the close of probation. None of these things were happening, but they set them aside. And I understand why they did. I'm not saying that they were wrong in doing that in, in the ultimate sense. But in a logical sense, they were. It was not logical. You know, and Christ, of course, did not come back October 22nd, 1844. He didn't close up the work on the Day of Atonement. He began the work on the, on the Day of Atonement. And then that wasn't just to, it's the Day of Atonement, but it's not a day uh, to us, right? It's obviously been a lot more than one day since October 22nd, 1844. So the Day of Atonement is obviously a period of time. It represents a period of time in history in which we are in now. But there are many things that still have to happen. So when we look at this uh, reference here to the creation and to the firmament and the stars, I think it's 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 a reference to time wrapping up. It's it's you know the new earth is going to be there, but it's also in God's time scale, right? It's in God has seen these things, and He's going to give a lot of information about time here in the following verses. So he's going to bring us up to, uh, you know, the new heavens and the new earth. And then Daniel's going to be told to shut up the words and seal uh, the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. So we know that running to and fro has to do with studying the book of Daniel and that there's going to be an increase of knowledge in regard to the prophecies. So the, these verses are going to bring us up to the second coming of Christ, to the new heaven and the new earth. And then Daniel's going to be instructed to seal up the book, to shut up the words and seal up the book. And if we're going to make a present truth application of this, and I, and I think we can, you know, we're going to need to understand this, the, the historical correctly. But also, I think there must be keys in here, as we've been using in these symbols. So these different spans of time. So so we had a question. So if we go back here, um, I guess where it talks about many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So we were we were addressing this before. And what would be the present truth application of the special resurrection? Because obviously it's not referring to people being truly resurrected, but it is it is using the illustration of waking up. So I guess the question is, when does that occur? And, and when they wake up, there's going to be these two classes, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So where would we place this second verse? 
So we'll, we'll look at the third verse, but we need to place this second verse. And we haven't really done that. We tried to look Could at some that of be when the breath, Sorry, Theodore. Could that be when the breath comes into the dead, dry bones? The breath of prophecy? Okay, so we talked about that. And, and I would say no. And why did I say no last time? Like, there is a connection, but what was it about uh, Ezekiel 37? Why I wouldn't put this in the present truth application as Ezekiel 37, at least in the broader application of Ezekiel 37. We, we could, we could take a present truth application of Ezekiel 37. So we looked at that. I guess I missed it. But then I thought, okay, but it's not that. Then how about with with July 18th and some fell away? They gave up and some decided we're going to persist and we're going to find out what went wrong. Okay, yeah. So I mean, one of the things that we have here is we we have the everlasting gospel being represented, right? Because the everlasting gospel is a three step testing prophetic message that develops and demonstrates two classes of worshipers. So we would say that. If we're going to take this as a present truth application, many of them that sleep in the dust of the work, dust, dust of the earth shall awake. That would have to be the everlasting gospel presented at the end of time, that, that it would have to represent a message that wakes people up. That, does that make sense to people? OK, so if we take this everlasting life, we've got five, seven, six, nine. So five seven six nine, and we add uh, two four one six. So that's everlasting life, and that gives us eight one eight five. Now, so I know that we had at one time. I think we had the number eight one eight four. I don't know if people remember that. Um, eight one eight four is the number of days from nine eleven. Uh, to my birthday that I have this year when I turned 61, right? So that would be, that's an inclusive count from 9-11 to February 6th. It includes February 6th, um, 2024. I don't know if people remember that when we looked at 8184. Nobody remembers that. So obviously 8185 is going to bring you one day past my birthday. It's going to bring you to February 7th, 2024. I'm just seeing if... Uh, have this written in the notes at all. Maybe I didn't even write it down. It's not in these notes anywhere, but I, I know we looked at it before. At least I did. So it's going to bring us to February 7th. Is Does that mean anything? You know, that, And that's an inclusive count. So if we go 8185 and I just do a cardinal count, it's going to bring me to February 8th, 2024. It's kind of interesting. Um, we got... Uh, February 8th is January 26th, so you get a 126 there. Uh, February 7th, of course, is January 25th. You get uh, 1126 in the, uh, the Jewish calendar. Okay, so we got, we got this everlasting life. And then we have, and then we looked at shame. Shame is uh, 2781. It's 1872 backwards. And so we know that's one of our primary symbols for July 18, 2020. And then it's just going to have like everlasting contempt. And that's going to be 5769 plus 1860. So 5769 plus 1860. And that's going to give, give us 7629. We count again from 911. And we, we talked about this before, but that actually brings us to if we do an inclusive count, that's going to bring us to the second day of the fifth month, July 31st uh, on the Gregorian calendar and July 18th on the Julian. So would that mean anything? If we, if we just did a cardinal count, it'd bring us to August 1st. But So do these symbols help, these spans of time, help us at all in trying to determine where we're going to place this. Now, of course, we have the July 18, 2020 symbol with shame. So you got everlasting life and you have shame and everlasting contempt. 
Is there any way that we can connect this with the three angels' messages in Millerite history and thus apply them to our history? Are people following what I'm doing? Or is somebody not following? Because I'm saying that we could, we would have to look at this message that awakens people from a sleep, right? And that sleep would represent obviously not death here, but it would represent a spiritual condition. And it's going to wake people up, but it's going to develop two classes of worshipers. Is that the everlasting gospel? Is that the message that this movement has proclaimed? Well, you would think that fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come would wake a lot of people up. Yeah. So, so I mean, I think we can relate it to the everlasting gospel, right? So this is a message to wake us up. Now, often we put that at 9-11, correct? Do we put uh, waking up at 9-11? Have we done that in the past? Yes. Okay. Now, if we're going to make a present truth application of this, we would need to put that waking up at 11 9 19, wouldn't we? That it would be referring to this movement? And, and we saw that when we took the dust of the earth and we added those together. We got 6210, and, and that's the same digits in uh, 1260. And we counted from September 11th to September 11th, right, because it happens to be exactly 17 years, which, which is rather interesting. And, and September 11, 2018, we're going to connect to uh, the presentation of Ezra, and also the fact it's the first day of the first month on the Islamic calendar. Right? So, so we had done that. So we, and that's why I'm counting from 9-11 with these different numbers. I'm trying to see, do these bring us somewhere? Right? Do they, do they, do they lead us to some dates that we could look at symbolically? I know it's a lot of numbers. Now, if I take, you know, the word, uh, like some to shame and everlasting contempt, and I add those together. If I start on November 9th, 1989, that's going to bring me to July 13th, 2019. Now that's uh, the ninth day of the fourth month, which is the date in which uh, the walls of Jerusalem were broken down, right? The ninth day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar, but July 13th on our calendar. So that's going to be, Seven and thirteen, seventh month, thirteenth day. I don't know if that it's it's a Sabbath. It's during um, let me see in 2019. So this is going to be before the rebellion of Baal Peor, a little bit before it. So maybe that's something to do with that history. I don't know when their camp meeting started in 2019. So they had the camp meeting in. Uh, in Germany there, right? That's where the rebellion's gonna happen, and that's gonna be but that's gonna be later. So so July thirteenth, I'm not sure, in two thousand nineteen. I know we had the camp meeting in Alberta in June, at the end of June of two thousand nineteen. So, you know, I'm just looking at these numbers and saying, well, do do these fit anywhere? And and maybe there's some way to analyze all of these different dates uh that they give us some other span of time. But I don't know. Okay, so just looking at these numbers and we're trying to find clues that confirm what we, what I'm saying about this, that I believe that this represents the everlasting gospel in our movement. Now, the one that we have, of course, is the 2781. And now we've looked at this before, right, in dealing with shame, but, do, but relating to July 18, 2020, do people in the movement see July 18, 2020 as something shameful that they're ashamed of. How should they be ashamed of it? Well, are people who were disappointed, are they ashamed of July 18, 2020? Right. And, and I'm taking that shame because it's, it's the inversion of how we normally would represent uh, July 18, because we usually go 1872 or 18720 uh, as the digits. And this is 2781, so it's in reverse. Zero is not represented, but it's, it's there. You just don't put it at the beginning of a number. So 
is this representing the class that are ashamed of July 18, 2020? Because you got the wise, they, they go to everlasting life. And then you have the wicked, they experience shame and everlasting contempt. Okay, so in other words, they're experiencing this shame because they're they're fighting against something that was ordained of God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I don't see all the symbols I would like to see, but maybe there's some way in which we would have to look at this um, that I haven't considered. But it just seems to me that those that sleep in the dust of the earth that shall awake, that has to do with the 777 structure. So the 777 structure is going to start on November 9th, 2019. It's going to contain July 18, 2020, right? 252 days after November 9th, 2019. It's also going to have the March 27th, 2021 date in it. And then it's going to end with December 25th, 2021. And, and, and I'm saying that this is referring to that testing message in that period. And, and that, that I think that we would find in examining this, that there, that, that there would be symbols that would tie us to that. But exactly where those symbols are, we see some of them, but we don't see all of the symbols that I would like. You know, the dust of the earth is going to bring us to, you know, 2018, September 11th, a symbolic date when I'm in Arkansas. Uh, and then we have the, 2781. And I probably should put a, just a footnote on that, even though we've looked at that number before. So footnote I would put here. 2718. Wasn't it 2781? Yeah. 2781. I just, you know, you get those. And then, and, and then 182, 1872 is the other direction. Right. So we usually have it represent that. Right. So I put the zero there because, you know, I could do this. Right. You see what I'm saying? You don't normally put the zero at the beginning of a number, but we can put it at the end. So it represents that re represents July 18, 2020. You know, I could even just put it like this. Yeah. Ellen G. White was born in 1827. So we know that she was born in a date that has the iteration, different iteration of those digits. And then we have. So, so, so that to me is like the second angel's message, July 18, 2020, in that context. So it's, it's the, the second major date, but I don't have anything that specifically references other than that we awake. Like there's those that sleep in the dust of the earth, they shall awake. Now, if we count from 9-11, that word awake, uh, so 6974, right? 6974. And we looked at this before. It brings us to October 15th, 2020. And we didn't really have anything for that. I, I did look at you know, like what presentations were going on. That's going to be, I think it was in the study of Ezekiel, where we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 21. But we don't really have any anything for that, you know, other than just we have this date. Maybe there's these dates if we put them all on a line. We took all of these different numbers and counted them from 9-11 or from 11-9. We might find some kind of structure or span between these various dates. Uh, we obviously have the symbol as the 27th day of the seventh month. So that's a symbol of July 27th, uh, which is has to do with Josiah Lich's prophecy. And uh, so I don't know. So maybe there's some other thing I would look at. And then we have, so then when we address, so we're going to say that the shame and everlasting contempt, that's going to refer to those, the disappointment of July 18, 2020, and the result of that. Now, the everlasting contempt, so that's the shame. Could we put the everlasting contempt as December 25th, 2021? So I'm asking that question. Is there any way in which I could say that that is the third date? Okay. Well, here's, here's something a little bit obscure. So if we go to 2001 and what we're going to do is we're going to count from my birthday, but we're going to count not from my birthday on the Julian calendar, which is February 6th or the Gregorian calendar. I mean, we're going to count my birthday from the biblical calendar, which is the 11th day of the 11th month in 2001 
And if we do that, it's actually February 5th. And if I count, that is the everlasting uh, cont- contempt. So that's 5769 plus 1860. We get 7629. And if I count that many days, it brings me to the end of December 25th, 2021. So would that be significant, taking my birthday in, in 2001 rather than September 11th, 2001? Well, I say perhaps we could do that because you were, you were the primary one who wanted us all to study on that date and to watch a bunch, bunch of presentations that went worldwide. And very few took you up on that. Yeah, so, so there is a yeah. contempt. Yeah. So and what there is in um in on December twenty fifth, two thousand one. We know there's lots of things that come come into play there. There's Collins study, there's Stevens recognition of the seven hundred and seventy seven years from four fifty seven to three twenty one to the year of the Sunday law. That's something that we should have noticed before, but we didn't. Then there's the fact that there was this invitation being made to the movement to study together, which was rejected, right? So the Canadian American groups did not want to have the groups study together. They didn't want my, my group, if you want to call it my group, but our group. They didn't want us to be, um, a part of that. And, and, and they weren't even interested in December 25th, 2021. So, you know, they were giving lip service at that time to still, maintaining July 18, 2020, but they had no interest in the end of the 777 days, which which I found kind of amazing that they just, and this would be the contempt, right? What I call the everlasting contempt. And the contempt, in some ways, it's directed at the message, but it's also directed to me, at me, to me as a person. And that's basically what I experienced from the Canadian and American group in connection with the end of the 777 days was contempt. That's all they had. So does that, that sort of seem to fit? Uh, I, I mean, think I'm gonna, it does. Yeah. So, so we have a significant year. That significant year is 2001. So we can put this footnote here. So we have H5769. Plus H1860. And this equals, is it 7629? So when I put 11th day, 11th month, we know that's the biblical calendar. In 2001, and of course it's, it's already a symbol, 1111, to December 25th, 2021, when the contempt for the 777 days, that is the everlasting gospel, is demonstrated by the heathens. Okay, does that make sense? So we got from that 1111 in 2001, I guess I could put that it's February 5th. So, so I think that makes sense to me. Also, we, we can say, we have everlasting contempt. So the fact that this is a rejection of the everlasting gospel, that seems to fit in as well. And the everlasting gospel also brings everlasting life. Right? So there's the two classes there. So, so I think just in the language itself, we have these symbols of the everlasting gospel and a rejection of the everlasting gospel. Okay, so... I want to look again at this. Um, so I need to put this in here as well. So the everlasting life, we have the everlasting contempt and the everlasting life. And these contrast each other. Now, when I had looked at the everlasting life, right, we talked about that it went one day past my birthday on the one side, right? So that is, it's going to go one day past my birthday from 9-11. This other one, we go from December 21st, 2001, we go backwards. It goes one day past my actual birthday. It goes to my biblical birthday, uh, the 11th day of the 11th month, which is when I was born in 1963. 
on the 11th day of the 11th month on the biblical calendar, February 6th. So that's kind of interesting that one goes one day from the end of that 777 structure. It goes one day early, so to speak. And the other one from 9-11 goes one day late. And that's going to be, of course, this year, a birthday. So it's going to go to February 20, uh, February 7th instead of February 6, 2024. But, but I think that's significant that we have that on either side of it. Now, what would that mean symbolically? I mean, it, it balances out, so to speak, but I think it's significant. H, seven, six, nine, plus H, two, four, six, plus days. Okay, so we got it. One going one day early, one going one day late. Does that does that tell us something? So we've got February fifth and February seventh. My birthday is in between those, and we're taking the beginning of our this this line, which we we keep starting at nine eleven with these spans of time. And then it's going to bring us from December 25th, 2021. If we go back, so we're going back. That's how I counted it. So one day before my birthday. So is that kind of like bracketing the date? That could be a way of looking at it. Yeah. Okay. So it brackets February 6th as a symbol. Okay. So that that's kind of interesting. And so it, it gives us, of course... Um, I just got to see something here. Didn't put all these dates in here. Okay, so the number of days from my birthday uh, to 9/11 in in 2001, because it's not a leap year, is 217 days. And is 217 an uh, interesting number or not? Yeah, I didn't wrap. Yeah. So we know Raphia in 217 BC. Uh, we also have it as a symbol of July 21st. Right? So it's a symbol of midnight. Correct. So, so that's kind of interesting. And then if we go, I'm just going to go here. I'm just putting all these dates in this calculator. And I don't see anything jumping out at me. You know, I have to think about that a little bit more. Okay. So, so we do have some things that tie it to this message. That's the main thing that we want to see is it's tying us to the 777 structure as being to this movement, the everlasting gospel, that's to awaken the movement. So if we're going to put this in this paper, in the red lettering, so they're going to awake. So we would just say that this is the message of the 777 days. So that's how we would look at it at, in the present truth application right it's the message of the 777 days beginning at uh 9 11 so and then we have the two classes so some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt so this everlasting this shame this is going to be i'll just put here equals july 18 2020 it's kind of in the footnote already and this everlasting contempt. So I want to put all these dates here. Starting at November 9th, 2019, July 18, 2020, and everlasting contempt. Uh, this is going to refer to December 25th, 2021. Which uh, is going to end up on the next page. So we can see that that's going to, um, and that's going to end the 777 structure. Now then we have the, the next verse, they that be wise. So the wise are going to be the people that obviously accept this. So they're going to shine as the brightness of the firmament. Now let, let's look at some of these Hebrew words here. So uh, the word wise is sakal. 
Um, it first occurs in Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 6. And, of course, we know that's going to be the the tree of knowledge of good and evil, where, where Eve is going to see that the tree was desired to make one wise, which is, of course, wrong, right? I mean, it is right in a certain sense. You're going to have the knowledge of good and evil, but that's not necessarily true wisdom. But we know so also this is a test, right? So this is the test that, that's given to Adam and Eve. So there is the true wise, those that pass the test. And then um, uh, the word itself, oh, let me go back here. You need to see what I'm doing. Okay, so there we see wise. And then um, we have this word, uh, well, the word wise, I want to look at the, just the definition, what it means to be prudent, be circumspect, wisely understand, to prosper, right? to have insight of comprehension. So there's nothing particularly un, you know, surprising about what the word wise means. We all know what it means. And then uh, we have the word shine, zahar. We have looked at this word before, 2094, because it has to do with teaching. So the wise, they shine, but really they teach, admonish. They, they're shining lights, right? And... um and it's also related to 2094 as well. But here you're going to see that it's there's 22 occurrences in the King James uh, or in the Bible of that Hebrew word as the way defined by uh, Strong. And you're going to see it's in Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. Uh, and further, by these, my son, be admonished. That word admonished is the word shine. And, and of course, of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. It also means warning. So we see it in Ezekiel chapter 3, the watchman chapter. Therefore, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning. So does this, the wise shining, have to do with the loud cry message? The message that happens after that the message that we are developing and becoming a part of after December 25th, 2021. Can, can we see that, that this word shine, meaning to teach, to admonish, that that's what has been happening and is what is going to continue to happen? Yes, I can. And and then we have this word brightness. Now, brightness is Zohar. So they're, they're very similar words. You know, if you look at, uh, you got Zahar, right? Sahar, it's uh, Tzadi, Ha, and Resh. And then you look at brightness, it's just the only difference is, is actually a vowel pointing. So it's spelled the same in the consonants. And it comes from this word uh, Zahar, so to admonish. But, you know, it's translated as brightness or shiny. So it's just a vowel pointing, so brilliance. But, and that's probably why they translate it as shine instead of uh, admonish as the brightness of the firmament. But the idea there is that this admonishment or teaching is a type of shining. You know, to think of as a teacher, as somebody who shines, I like it as a guitar teacher because the idea is that you are to inspire people. You, you have to, you have to put out a lot of energy when you teach, you know, to, to help the student with their discouragement. Teaching guitar is a little bit like being a psychologist in some way, but uh, you have to understand the emotions of your students. And and then we're going to have, so they're going to teach, right, or admonish as the brightness of the firmament. So seven, five, four, nine. Now that's properly in an expanse that is the visible arch of the sky. It's translated in the King James as the firmament, right? So <clears throat> um, Brown Drivers Briggs says an extended surface, solid expanse, firmament, expanse, flat as base support, firmament or the vault of heaven supporting waters above, uh, considered by Hebrews as solid and supporting waters above. So, so the idea of a firmament, you can see where we get the word firm, 
right? It's something that supports. It's like, in a sense, like a foundation would. So the wise are going to be teaching a message that supports the message that was given 1840 to 1844, right? That can work. Yeah. So that means, and we also can't reject the message of July 18th. So, so anybody who's saying that July 18th and what we taught in that period was error would not be shining as the brightness of the firmament, right? They would be not being admonish, admonishing according to the light that has come from the past. So here in this case, the wise are the ones who are teaching the message that was given. Those that go to shame and everlasting contempt, they're actually rejecting that light, right? They're rejecting the light that comes from that message uh, from December 25th, you know, back to November 9th, including July 18, 2020. Okay. So you can see how we spent some time with this and, and we can see how it fits in looking at the words themselves and, and some of the Hebrew numbers. And I'm sure there's a lot more here that we have not noticed. And any more thoughts about th that verse or that part of that verse? They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Well, it reminds me of the casket and jewels dream too. The witch in Job? <clears throat> no, I said it reminds me of the casket and jewels dream. Oh, jewels. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't, I, I was trying to piece together what you said. Yeah, so, so we have the casket. That's William Miller's dream. And of course, we know that those stones are going to be, you know, and the, the gems and all those things are going to be found and placed in a casket that's going to shine. Ten times brighter or something like that? I can't remember. Yeah, ten times brighter. Okay, so now we got, so they're going to shine as the brightness of the firmament. Now, we have all these different numbers, and I'm just trying to look at some of them. So if I take the brightness of the firmament, and I count from 9-11, it goes to my birthday in 2028. So I don't know if that's significant or not. But the fact that we keep getting my birthday is kind of odd. So 2096 plus, I'm just checking it again, 7549 is 9,645. Let's see if I'm doing that correctly. Yeah, so it goes to my birthday in February 6, 2028. So I think we should take a note of that. I'm not sure what it means. You know, it'll be 65 then. I don't know if that matters. But we just keep having my birthday show up. So remember we had Stephen's birthday show up in that other, looking at, at verse 1. Was it verse 1? Yeah, we, had, we kept having Stephen's birthday show up. Yeah, it's not very good. So we'll go here. So H2096 plus... H seven five four nine equals nine nine thousand six hundred and forty five days from nine eleven to February sixth, twenty twenty eight. So we just keep getting these February sixth or thereabouts. Okay, so so that coincidence occurs again on February 6th, and so we're, we put it there in a footnote. So that's the brightness of the firmament. Okay, and then they that turn many to righteousness. Now, you can see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven English words and two Hebrew words. Now we see tzaddik, right? We see righteousness, M6663. We've looked at this word before. Let's go examine these words. Right, tzaddik. We can see that there to be just, be righteous, and to be justified depends on the form that it's in. So it would be in the nifal form if it means to be put or made right. It could be in, because it definitely wouldn't be in the hithpal form. So I haven't looked at which form it's in. Let's take a look in the Hebrew. 
so you can see um, right here. So it's got a mem at the beginning. You can see a vob. There's like a little straight line. It's like like just an L or something. But that that's a vob, and and that's just like and, and then it's going to have the idea of upturning many. This is the mem at the beginning. Do people remember what a mem does uh, to a word? So the you know, so the mem prefix in Hebrew. Anybody remember? Usually means from. Now we got the lamed that means like to or against. You can kind of almost look at them as as opposites. Now it's going to say it's going to turn many to righteousness. But why doesn't it say many from righteousness if that's what the Hebrew means? And, and we don't have the word turn there at all in Hebrew. No, it is in the nifal form. So it means to to um, like to make somebody righteous or to turn to righteousness. Right. So that's why it's in the hifal form. I say nifal, hifal. So it means to turn to righteousness. That's one of the meanings. It could mean to bring justice. But they have the mem at the beginning. Now, it wouldn't be turning many from righteousness. Uh, and the many, that's just the 7227, right? So you're going to turn to righteousness, many. But the reason why it has the mem is it's you're actually turning them from something to righteousness. So you're turning them about to righteousness is the idea. Okay, so we got... Uh, yeah, the translation of latter rain has to do with the teacher of righteousness. Angela's asking a question. Yeah, teacher of righteousness according to righteousness. That's going to be, I'm trying to remember. Do you remember the verse? No, I'm trying to. Was it, um, was it in Deuteronomy 33-2 or Isaiah or something? I always thought it was in Isaiah, but... Uh, could be. It's been a long time since I looked at it. Let me see. I'll just type in. If you could find that, then um, you could be right. It could be Hosea 6.3. But, yeah, I'm not sure. But that might be something to look at. But, anyway, the idea is that there – we know that the latter ring is a message and that it has to be taught. Right? So exactly which verse that is that we use that. I, I can't remember. But I shouldn't have remembered it. I'll find it, or somebody will find it. So they're going to turn many to righteousness as the stars. So if you add righteousness and stars together, you get 10,219. And you know about where that's going to bring us. So if we counted from November 9th, 1989, it's going to bring us to November 1st. 2017, which is the 11th day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar. So kind of interesting, but whether that's significant. But I just put righteousness and stars. I didn't put the many, but righteousness and stars. The many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Yeah, I found jo Joel 2, 223. I think that's where we can find teacher of righteousness. Yeah, that sounds right now, come to think of it. Yeah. And A.T. Jones does uh, a presentation on that. And, and, and that's an interesting verse, you know, in the context of 223, because we, we looked at that 223 months is in, in, in um, on an Islamic calendar is 18 years and seven months, right? Was that correct? People remember that? Because an Islamic calendar just has lunar months. Well, on our calendar, it would also be, uh, because you just divide it by 12. So, you know, 12 times 18 is 216 plus 7 is 223. So, so Joel 223 becomes a symbol of July 18th, right? And um, then, right, and you see here in the translator's notes, Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. So that's what is dealing with the former or a teacher of righteousness. 
moderately according to righteousness is the alternate reading. Yeah. So that has to do with the former reign moderately means a teacher of righteousness according to righteousness. Okay, so that's kind of interesting in the context of what we're looking at here in Daniel chapter 12. So that those that shine are admonishing their teachers. And they're going to turn many to righteousness, right? So we have a teacher of righteousness. And then it says, as the stars forever and ever. Now, can we equate this, the stars forever and ever, has having anything to do with righteousness? Um, so when we look at stars, and our time's almost up here for today, but we have stars, if you look it up, it's Kokab, of the star of a Messiah, brothers, youth, numerous progeny, personification, gods on the seas. Right? That's how Brown Drivers works. Probably from 3522, which is Kaban, mm-hmm. means to heap up, and 3554, Kava, which means uh, to roll. So in the sense of blazing, like a blister to burn. So they're going to have as stars forever and ever. And and olam, right, and ad. So they're taking this word olam, and and they're taking this word ad, which just means to continue forever, right? So it's two different words. They're not related words. So it just has to do... That you could translate it to the stars for all time would be one way to translate it. So I think we'll come back to that tomorrow and, and look at this a bit more in detail. But, but I think we're making progress here in looking at these verses. So I know we, we jumped back into these earlier verses, but uh, we knew there was things that we, we had to establish. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the study this morning. We pray for your continued uh, presence in our lives. We ask that we can cling to you. Thank you for working in the way that you do in our studies in the morning. We ask that you can help us in our personal study throughout the day. Bring us together again to study thy word according to thy will. We pray and ask in Jesus' name.